Welcome back everyone to another Coach Blakers video. I keep saying Coach Blakers, Coach Blaker video. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Coach Blaker. I've been professionally coaching for going on 10 years. That's a long time. I know it's a very, very long time. Um, I've reached every roll to diamond and I'm doing it again this season. If you guys want to watch me play live, twitch.tv slash coachblaker.com. Wait, what? Twitch.tv slash coachblaker. <laughs> Speakitup.com. If you guys like coaching, coachblaker.com is where you want to go. Um, if you guys are on the fence about coaching, same place, coachblaker.com. I have a, a specific trial coaching thing there for those of you that are on the fence. Only serious players, please, but also more information about that. If you just go to my site, coachblaker.com, link in the description below. Now, we're going to be doing patch notes today. So patch notes, whether or not you don't even care about patch notes, which I think every ranked player should care about patch notes, especially if it's pertaining to your champion, at least. Um, I'm going to do my best to kind of go through these and talk about, well, this champion is going to perform this way, or maybe, you know, it might perform really well, or it's going to perform worse. You know, I want to go through that. Also, this video is not going to be edited. My patch notes are never edited. So patch notes, 17. The first thing that we have here is an Ari uh, nerf. Decrease the charm early. So I think that's a good thing. The charm that she could set up, 1.5 seconds is just a lot at level one. Of course it can scale, but like think about how many champions have a level one, um, 1 1.4, have a level one type of like CC that lasts that long. It's a very, very long time for a mage to get hit with a charm. You're pretty much dead every single time you're with the charm. So I do think that's good. I feel like they should lower it even more, honestly. Because, uh, yeah, I think they should lower even more, honestly. Ari mains, I'm sorry. I don't think this is going to change much about her, though. For for the person that is getting charmed, it's going to help. But, like, I don't think it's going to change the fact, like, if you get hit with a charm, you're probably going to die anyway. So I'm not really tripping too much about that. Uh, WAP scaling decreased, cooldown increased early. E cooldown increased early. So I've been playing a lot of Vizier, if you guys haven't seen on my stream. Um, and yeah, so seeing this nerf here, it's not, I don't think it's going to be that bad. It's kind of just to help. Realistically speaking, he, he is a really safe champion when it comes to being able to just W and E out the way. It's not necessarily about setting up the ultimates because if you're going to be doing one rotation anyway, it doesn't matter how long the cooldown is going to be, right? If it's 22 seconds, if I use it once and then I get a kill, I don't need to use it again. So I feel like this is more for, um, oh, actually, it always explains it here, but I hate like reading it because I want to say it myself. But anyway, I think that it's just there for making sure that he can die because <laughs> 19 seconds is a little bit, you know. So, hey, who knows? I just think it's it's, it's just to, to keep him from being so safe. Uh, passive shields increase, E damage increased. I think this is actually huge for Camille mains. Um, I think this is actually going to make her top tier again if not top tier close i think she's always been kind of close to top tier the safety that she has in lane the ability to just escape things the dual potential that she has later on i think she's an extremely good champion and if you're a top laner i definitely recommend playing her she just takes a little bit more skill to learn but once you get her down i'm pretty sure you can carry all your games 100 percent, 100 percent. very good champion and i think this is just going to make her better Azure e cooldown decrease i think that doesn't make much sense to me but uh wait ezra's lost his place in solo queue uh, in pro play in solo queue maybe because i don't i don't know i don't know how i feel about it. it's just gonna make him better but like i don't know how i feel i don't know if that was necessary ezra means you might think it is necessary but me personally it's like okay right <laughs> that's a waste of a nerf or slash buff on a champ that doesn't really need it but hey do you think chicken wang uh, Graves cooldown decreased, our base damage increased. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. Again, I think this is just one of those small things. They might get buffed later on in other patches, but I don't think this changes Graves tremendously. Uh, I think it's about the same. Uh, maybe it's just more execute damage. Maybe you can go, maybe, uh, what is it? You can go Electric Q or you can go uh, Dark Harvest. Maybe it makes that a little bit better. First Strike. I don't really know Graves that go First Strike, but maybe if you do, make it better because of your ability to execute um, and, and burst combo somebody. But in actuality, I don't think it really does much for a player that goes like Fleet um, into like uh, 
Umbral Glaive until like he clicked. Like, it just helps with burst damage. That's all I'm going to say. But I don't think it's a lot. All abilities adjusted. Oh, Hecarim did need a little bit of change. Let's see, what we, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. So base armor is lowered. HP growth is lowered. Okay. So far, we're not looking hot. Damage on Q, Rampage, increased. Oh, mama. Uh, so it scales off of AD a little bit better than it did before. But it's weaker. So they made it more of a scaling champ now. Damage per stack. Yeah, it seems like they made it more of a scaling champ. Cooldown. Oh, this is huge. Cooldown Q per stack? Wait, Q cooldown per stack. If this means what I think it means, he can cast his Q more often. Yo, this is huge, actually. I think, if that's what it is. Max number of stacks. Oh, he can get three stacks now? Okay. Stack fall off one stack per second at end of duration. Okay. Medical. Yeah, I like this already, this change. Okay, let's see what his W does. Uh, so W has a higher cooldown early. Hecarim gains armor and magic resist? Bruh. And he heals. This, it doesn't say it changed it. Okay, no, that's that's huge. Heck, I'm about to be OP, okay. Uh, minimum damage, on E, again, it's scaling. Oh, but they reduced it this time. I wonder why. Doesn't seem like much has changed. Oh, that's minimum damage. I'm griefing right now by reading incorrectly. Huh. It still seems like it was nerfed. Minion, minimum knockback, maximum knockback, seconds at all ranked. It seems like they didn't nerf this. Do they want more of his damage to be hit on cues? Is that what's going on here? Do they want more of his damage to be like in the in, inside of the fight instead of like just one banging somebody? Field duration. I mean, they just nerfed the field duration. So I want to read it because I'm just curious. I, my thoughts are they, they want him to be more about you're in the fight, let's keep clapping cheeks rather than. We run at you. You have nothing left. We run at you. Have nothing left. So let's see. Hecarim has been the most stable champion for the past few seasons, either being a dominant pro jungler or underwhelming in solo queue. He's also been horsing around with a variety of builds, ranging from tank to assassin to fighter. We believe a Hecarim that's more bruiser, fighter focused, and both more rewarding to play and will be less pro skewed. Uh, to that end, we're saddling Hecarim with some Q and W adjustments that should help him with synergi uh, synergize synergies with fighting gun. Can I read? Can I read? I'm just saying. I can coach, but I can't read. We're also lowering his base utility power and damage to reduce his strength as a pure tank. These changes should lead to more damage oriented Hecarim builds. Well, that was obvious by, based off the scaling, but they didn't tell me if that was the point to just keep him in the fight. I'm going to assume they called him Bruiser, uh, Bruiser Fighter, and usually those champions do decide to stay in the fight for a longer time. Um, instead of trying to just go in and come out, go in and come out. So I do like that. We'll see what happens. That bonus armor thing is, is going to be nuts. I, Hecker about to be top tier again, especially because farming, he could farm really, really fast. Like, it's going to be huge. Anyone, anyone that wants to hop into the jungle, play the chant right now before it's nerfed. Uh, Cassid and Q cooldown decrease. Mana cost decreased. I don't think it does too much. Make sure landing, landing a little bit better, I guess, but I don't think it does too much. Uh, maybe on a higher level. Um, Maokai. Q, E, and R adjusted. Okay, let's, let's see what we got. So passive, getting hit by large jungle monsters now reduces sapling magic cooldown by 1.5 seconds per stack. Okay, they want him to be a jungler. That was plain obvious. He used to be a jungler back in the day though. I kind of miss it. Uh, damage, the lowering the Q damage that he has, but increasing it later. Uh, Q now deals percent maximum health. Oh my gosh. Okay. Q now deals bonus damage to Mon. Oh my lord. Okay. Uh, remove saplings no longer deal maximum percent health damage. That's good because that was stupid. Uh, base damage is increased though, and empowered brush damage is also increased. It looks like. Hmm. Okay. And he doesn't scale as hard on AP. As he did before, it looks like. So that's good. Minion no longer take minions no longer take empowered brush damage from saplings. I 
didn't really even pay attention to that, but that is true. Um, hmm. Mana cost is lower, slow amount is higher. Okay. A little sap, a little sappy. Brush and power saplings now slow for 35%, but now it's, oh man, no. No, they're doing that thing where the slow increases based off your stats. That's so OP. That's, that's always OP. That's always OP. Think of Twitch. When he builds AP, dude, that slow is like horrendous. This is OP. Come on, right? What you doing? Freaking griefers. Uh, missile initial speed. Oh, it's increased. Okay, maximum. Wait, what? Missile initial speed. Yeah, maximum speed. Oh, it's saying how fast it gets after. Missile acceleration. Okay, that's cool. Malkai now gains 40, 50, 60% bonus movement speed. That DK. What the fudge? I mean, that's actually pretty good. If he snares someone, he gets to run to him as fast as possible. That's actually pretty nice. I think approach velocity uh, would be really good with Malkai at this point. Like, everything gives him a reason to, like, catch up to you, especially if he's going to be a jungler. So I actually kind of like this. This is this is, this is is pretty nice. I'm going to have to try out Malakai jungle because I do like the old boy. And I always like like the abilities that he had. And we'll, we'll see how that is. All right, Misfortune, the terrorizer of solo queue at the point at this moment. I swear, every Misfortune I get just, like, straight up ints. Every Misfortune they get, even if they int, they still do a lot of damage and they still make a pain. I don't know what's going on here. We need to have uh, matchmaking fixes. Anyway. Q base damage increased. Um, Q base damage increased late. Cast time adjusted. W mana cost decreased. Attack speed bonus increased. E cooldown increased. Base damage decreased. AP scaling increased. Slow now scales with AP. Why? Why does Riot always give in to this, to this like meta shift that players create? This is basically incentivizing that we want misfortune support, and if you're not playing misfortune support, we want you to go damage. Just, just cut out misfortune support. Period. What is wrong with these people? Do they not land against misfortune? It's un, it's un. First of all, she's useless as a support. I, look, I'm saying it, and so is Ash. Look, how many times have you seen about two, three, four assassins, and you're playing AD carry, and oh, you can't, you don't have no peel, and oh. The, the AEC you have that's your support dies in one shot, and then guess who's next? Like, come on, man. I, I want them to go back to the old support days. Okay, one of the three. Not even three. Forget mages, delete them all. No, I'm I'm pretty sure all ADCs probably feel that way. But uh, um, I want more engaged champions. I want more enchanters. Like I said, if you're going to make a mage champ, make it so that they don't obliterate the lane. It's literally coming down to the point... Um, as an AD carry, unless you're something like Lucian or Draven or Samir, you know, a kill type of champ, you can just do everything by yourself. It comes up to the point of who has the better support damage wise. That wins lane. And it feels very awful. Now, I'm not saying you lose the game, but I just mean you just kind of just do nothing for like the first five, 10 minutes because you're getting your butt kicked and you're getting poked out of lane and it feels horrible being under tower. I feel like it just comes down to who has the best one. Oh, it's Vel'Koz and Azerath? Well, I think Vel'Koz, you know, is a lot easier to hit their ability. Actually, no, I think Zara's a lot easier to hit his abilities, but I think Vel'Koz takes a little bit of time. So, um, looks like Zara wins. Like, it just comes down to that. And I don't like that feeling. And that's what's happening with these supports here. Oh, we got Misfortune support. Guess she just hits it with the, with the Make It Rain. Is that even the ability name? I think it is. She doesn't say it, though, right? She just does it. And it's like, okay, nice. I guess I just kind of get chunked for, for a good 100 points of my HP. Do that about three or four times. I'm dead or after back. No counterplay. Ash is the same way. Like, man, it sucks. I'm sorry. I'm on a tangent. Anyway, like I was saying, it looks like they're just trying to shift away from uh, the, the, the max E thing as an ADK, but they do want you to still go AP, or AP Misfortune support. Um, which just sucks, in my opinion. They just need to get rid of it. It just feels horrible. Um, e electrocute interaction removed. Remove all interaction where each application of Nami's E would count towards proccing electrocute. E and its applications will now only count as a single spell cast for effects of such as electrocute. Why did this not get changed before? How long ago was this? 
I feel like they just need to have some solo key players. Just have a whole, the whole balance team needs to be solo key players. And you need to have a balance team for each ELO. I mean, a, a, a person, right? There are rioters that are, I, I don't know if they're necessarily challenger. I haven't heard of one, but maybe there is. But there are rioters that are master. There are rioters that are grandmaster. There are rioters that are diamond. There are rioters, like, I feel like there should be a rider in like every single ELO that does balance changes. So that way we can see what, because Lucian and Nami have been broken for how long? I mean, y'all know those are in bot lane. And those that see them snowball know how painful it is. So why was this, why did this take so long? Like, come on, man. Come on. Nocturne base attack speed increase, passive cooldown decreased. Um, this will, yeah, this, like I said before, I didn't say it. Misfortune, I think, will still be fine. Um, you're just going to have to deal more damage, right? But her AP version is going to be just as strong. Nami's electrocute thing, I don't think it matters too much. Still a pain. But it does help. And then Nocturne's basic attack speed increased. Passive cooldown decreased. It helps, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, rail, W dismount, movement speed increased. Oh, that's huge. E cooldown now flat. Hmm. Hmm. That's actually kind of nice. This might actually change a lot for rail, to be honest. Renekton, Q base damage decreased. AD scaling increased. You see what's going on here? Let me get a sip of my coffee. All right, Renekton mains. Or anybody that's ever been a top main. What was the build before this? Score Drinker into Sterix. What's the build now? It's like Eclipse, like Bork, right? I mean, you built Bork before, but you know, we really build Bork now. And, and this, instead of Riot like being like, mm, let's, 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 let's send him back to his old days. Let's make him strong there. Let's just go with what everybody else is doing. Since everybody likes to build this damage on him, let's make it so he scales better with damage. I don't like that, right? Stick to your guts. If you gonna do something to a champion, keep it. Don't just change it later because you see players are changing it. Come on, man. It makes me sad on the inside. WAD ratio increase, E slow increase. Didn't even know there was a slow on his E. I mean, I guess there was, huh? I didn't really pay attention to it, though. 70% is huge, by the way. What? Uh, WAD ratio. That's fine. It might really matter. Set's still set. AD growth decreased. W bounce AD ratio decreased. I'm probably still going to permaban ban this champion, to be real. Riot has not done enough. So she's just not getting into my games. But it's a step in the right direction. Uh, Silas. Base health decrease, Q cooldown increase. Again, broken champion. Th th that's not even the abilities that makes him a pain. They need to do some more. Um, they need to buff his E, his passive damage. They need to do a lot more than what they just did there. He's going to be the same, in my opinion. Tarek, base magic resist decrease, E cooldown increased. Hmm. I actually thought... I actually thought Tarek was in a good spot. So it's just weird that I see that this gets changed here. Hmm. Hmm. I don't really know what to say about that one. I thought he was in a good spot before, so we'll see. What was their reasoning? Tarek has been t a little too dazzling in the bot lane recently. Excellent. Um, excelling at healing and CC in addition to being too durable, We're making him a bit less stunning by reducing the uptime on his er stuns and making him a bit more susceptible to poke and losing matchups i do think Tarek was good but in his own way it was one of those champs where it's like you're good if you know how to play Tarek. i necessarily think you could just pick up Tarek and just be a god that's weird is that a high elo change like a like an actual like super super high elo like elite like challenger let me go up and see or is that pro what is that for it's for skilled. Bro, get out of here then. That, I don't think that was that much of an issue. I swear, sometimes Riot just be like making buffs and nerfs for like the wrong champions at the wrong times, in my opinion. W cooldown increased at all ranks. That doesn't make him an, a threat either. Bruv! Bruv! Riot! What is your directions here? In which world does his auto attacks matter and his speed matter? I mean, it helps, but the main fact is this man is broken. 
He steals too many of your stats. He makes you irrelevant, even if he's like zero and five. If you're gonna do anything, you gotta you know reduce the stats. It might seem like I'm complaining. I'm not. I'm just trying to understand what their thought process was, because it's not just oh he attacks more. He dies if he can't attack. That could be you know remedied by CC. The issue is his ult. The issue is his Q stealing damage. Like this dude steals bonus armor, match resist with R. Then he heals. Then he does damage over time, all in one one R. Then he cues you and steals your attack damage, or I don't know if it's exactly like, I don't know if it's actually attack damage. It might just be damage, period. But steals that and then hits you with it. The attack speed doesn't really matter too much. Lethal tempo just erases. Like you put lethal tempo on that champion. What the heck? what does he need W for? <laughs> right. Oh my god. Let me just keep going. That chat's not going to do anything for Chano. Chano means to do your thing. Uh, Twisted Fate, QAP ratio, increase W mana, cost decrease. Um, okay. I mean, I think he does need a buff. Um, all right. And, and I'm not saying that what they're doing doesn't work. It's just like, I feel like when they nerf and buff champs, it's sometimes in the wrong direction. Either they do it to the wrong champions, which doesn't make sense, like Tarek, in my opinion. And then it's in the wrong direction, too. So, like, the the like the Trundle thing. That does, that's not really where his power comes from, in my opinion. Um, Like, Silas is not where his power comes from, in my opinion. So, it's like... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, that's a good, uh, that's a good update for Twisted Fate. Wukong basic attack speed decreased, base movement speed decreased. That's actually like a good nerf. <laughs> like, I'm not even gonna lie, that's a good one. That's a that's a good nerf. Don't know why they can't do that with other champs, but that one's actually like a step in the right direction. We can see how it goes from there. Um, and I'm not saying I'm a, a balanced person or a good game designer. I'm just like going off common sense. If you see something wrong with solo queue, you got to try to find the root of the problem. Or not just solo queue, I'm sorry, with the champion. You got to try to find the root of the problem. You can't just make up some stuff. Like, oh, it's his movement speed and his attack speed. Oh, it's, it's his ability to stun. I'm like, what? I'm so, I, I, look, I love you, right? I'm sorry. It's just sometimes they don't make sense to me. Um, stopwatch. Uh, it just costs more? Cool. Uh... Wait, GA now just costs more, period? Yikes. So everything just costs more. Oh, you get more ability power with Secret Arm Guard, though. You get more ability haste for building, uh, for building Zonias. Nobody cares about ARAM. I'm just kidding. I just don't do ARAM because I'm not an ARAM coach. Uh, Ultimate Spellbook. I don't really like that mode. I think everything's OP. Behavioral System. Oh, okay. Hold up. Hold up. Let me, let me take a little dab in this real quick. Over the last eight months, since we released our new feeding detection model, we have gained the confidence that allows us to make sp uh, significant adjustments to what we detect as intentional feeding. We expect an increase in detections and punishments over the over two times. Reminder that punishments for intentional feeding are a 14-day ban for the first transgression and a permanent ban for the second. Okay. Uh, chat restriction will be visible on the lobby screen for yourself and any party <laughs> Wait, are you serious? Chat restrictions will be visible on lobbies, on the lobby screen for yourself and any party members, as well as on individual profile pages. Oh, I gotta look some people up. That's toxic. Okay, so when they're saying lobby screens for streamers, y'all about to just get lit up because y'all about to. I mean, it's alright when you stream. You already can tell in the chat box. But if you ever tried to hide the chat box, it's on your stuff and it's on your profile. I don't know, well, obviously, like, showing a chat restriction in, like, a, a group party, like, okay, I'm getting four of my friends in my party, and they see it, that's one thing, and, you know, a lot of people like play League of Legends do like playing with their friends, so how would it, how would it be to just know that everybody just knows you've been chat restricted, it's gonna suck, and then, I don't know if it's just, I don't know if it's just for you to see on your profile page, or if it's everybody to see, so, I'm curious, because basically, if they're saying, hey, we're going to just uh, put the monkeys on display. I'm not just calling you guys that have been chat restricted monkeys. It's just an expression. Put the monkeys on display and watch them perform. Um, that's that's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy because there's a couple of games that do that. And it does uh, it does help with like being with like a, the amount of toxicity. Because it's like, oh, we're all going to be on display. 
for everybody to see that we've been toxic. So it does help. Honor restrictions applied to your account will be visible on your profile page with a lock icon and a tooltip. That's always been a thing, though. Competitive. Some of those rift rank key matchmaking will now focus on more players in Ramar and less on their visible rank. So I've seen this. And someone asked me about this in my Discord. And I actually have been seeing a lot of horrible matchmaking. I've been in the Smurf queue quite a bit more than I should be. Granted, I'm, I was smurfing, so it didn't really matter too much to me. But for y'all that aren't smurfing, getting people like that, um, when, when I smurf, I play champions that I want to get better at, like hard champions like Aphilios, Azir, um, or just off champions, period. I don't necessarily just play my mains when I'm smurfing, just because obviously that's kind of disrespectful. Whenever I smurf, it's to learn. But... For those of you that run into Smurfs or ultimate account people that actually are playing the champs that they know, it kind of sucks. So hopefully this fixes it. I don't really know what's going to happen. I don't really know how to like explain that one. They should have been a little bit more in depth. But um, basically, I'm pretty sure that it's going to like you have a hidden number behind your rank. If you didn't know what MMR is, it's matchmaking rating. So you have a, MM, you have a number behind your rank. And I guess the system has been doing it more on like, oh, you're silver, you're silver, you're silver, we'll go play with each other. Rather than like, oh, your number's 1,200, your number's 1,300, oh, you guys don't play with each other. So I'm curious. Uh, clash, whatever. Challenges, whatever. Um, call left updates. <laughs> Nothing really too much. All right. Okay, that was a patch note for you. Well, how long was that? Like 20 minutes? Oof, 26 minutes. That is a patch noter. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, though. So, I think this patch was actually a pretty good patch. A couple of them champions were just in the wrong direction, in my opinion. I um, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Again, if you guys are serious, or not serious, I'm sorry. If you guys would like coaching, coachblaker.com is where you want to go. If you guys want to watch me play, twitch.tv slash coachblaker is where you want me to, or is where you want to go. And then if you guys are on the fence about coaching, I highly recommend you try that trial session and see if it's coaching something for you. A lot of players don't know coaching is going to benefit them quite a bit until they try it. And it's like, holy crap, this is insane. And I don't know if it's because people just feel like, oh, I, why would I get coaching for a game? Blah, 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 blah. But you got to think. If you play hundreds, 200, 300, 400 games and things like that, and you're not really going anywhere, you're wasting just as much time. I mean, you could just be like progressing. You could be improving. You could be climbing. Whatever it is you want to do, it's just better. So I recommend you do the trial and, and see how it works for you, okay? Thank you guys for watching. Peace, peace. Late, late. Have a good rest of your day or night. And thank you guys for doing what? Approaching this like a coach.